Now here's really what's uh, happening when we run a CGI program. You at the client in your browser will be doing a get request. And you don't know that. You just type in whatever, cnn.com, vtc.com, something like that. And what happens is a get goes to the web server and says that it wants something. It wants a particular page, the root page, uh, the default home page, or some other page that you have clicked on a link. The server, whether that's an HTTP daemon or it's IIS sitting on a Microsoft box or whatever it is, will look through the request that you've made and see if you've asked for a program to be run, like prog.exe or some other .cgi or another another suffix that uh, may be tacked on a program to show that it's executable. The server, if it finds that this executable has been asked to be run, it will check it and make sure that it is executable and that you as the web client or the web server itself has the level of authorization needed to run this program. If you do, the program will be executed. It will get its information in through standard in and or environment variables. And that's the information that came from the client, what we're looking for. And uh, the kind of things as search engine queries or name and address on a form, whatever we've typed in, will be given to this little program which is running inside the server's space. The program then uses HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, to answer and give this information back to the client. All we know as a CGI program is that we are reading from standard in and we are writing to standard out. Just, just like the people were sitting at the command line running the program. We don't see anything different. We respond to the client. The client then, the browser, figures out what to do with the information that we send back. The first line that we have to send back is called the header, and that's in that text right there, content dash type colon text slash plain, if we're just going to be sending plain text. If we're going to be sending hypertext markup language, HTML, then we say content type colon text slash HTML. We will, of course, use both. We'll look at, at both. There are another set of content types uh, which relate to being MIME types, and those are like GIFs and JPEGs and, and video and Word documents and all kinds of other things that can get sent back and forth. We're not going to take a look at, at a lot of those, but just know that they're out there, and this header line is where the client gets what it's supposed to uh, display. It knows, okay, I, I have a text document coming to me, or I have HTML, or I have a picture coming to me. One of these things is coming out of the server, or multiples of these are coming from the server, and I need to know how uh, what they are so I can get them on the screen. After the header comes back with the content type, two new lines will be in there so that there's a blank line. That's the that's the HTTP spec, that's the standard, and then the actual information itself, what you know as the HTML, the head tags, the body tags, uh, the closed HTML, all of that stuff is content if an HTML page has been sent. So HTTP is still the bottom line, it's still the carrier of the information back and forth, and we only have to read standard and, re and respond to the standard out. I mean, it's how simple is that? So let's go on to our next video, and very shortly here we're going to write some code and interact with the Internet. First, we have to figure out how to get our server working so that it will understand uh, to run our CGI program.